and welcome to the Idea Space Podcast, a place for women who want to create the life they've been dreaming of. This is where women come to learn how to get their ideas out of their head and into the world. Whether you've wanted to create a better relationship, job, business, hobby, or a better self, I bet there's something more that you want, and it's time you were able to get it without feeling overwhelmed, alone, or confused. I'm your host, Jen Liddy, a high school teacher turned entrepreneur. It's my mission to help women bring their ideas to life and get what they want without feeling guilty, selfish, or confused. If you're tired of your dream living inside your brain and are ready to have what you want, you're in the right place. And I promise you can have it and you can stay sane while doing it. Let's go. Hi, welcome back to the Idea Space. Today is episode eight. And what I'm talking about today is the story of my burnout. I wanted to tell you this story because I think it will help you as you move into maybe a tiring time in your life, the holiday time. It's it's December and it's the holidays and it can be a really tiring time for especially women who have a lot to take care of. And I want to tell you the story of a moment in my life where I had a lot to take care of and I knew everything was about to change. I'm going to give you the quick and dirty version, but um, mostly I want you to kind of just come along for the ride. And at the end, I'm going to wrap everything up for you, I promise. So remember that I had been the owner in a fitness studio and my job was the operations. I did the behind the scenes systems, um, running things, you know, kind of overall operations. And I had known for about eight months that I was burned out. Actually, that's a lie. I I actually did not know I was burned out. I I had some clues. Uh, Looking back, I see it very clearly, but I will admit I could not see a lot of what was going on in the moment. And those stories will unfold as the podcast unfolds, but that's not what this story is about. I was definitely burned out because I I was very crispy. I was exhausted. I was snippy. I was irritable. I describe it now as feeling dead inside. All I knew was that I needed to scale back from being at the studio from six to seven days a week. I really wanted to be there more like four to five days a week. And I needed to do something completely different because my brain was just in a real rut. So I needed something to jostle my brain around. Weirdly, you might think this is weird. I needed some air. So I took a part time job adjuncting at a local college where I used to work full time. And I went back to it because teaching to me is like breathing. I just, I just feel really alive when I'm teaching something. And so my husband said, you know, I don't think you'll regret taking that. I think you'll regret if you don't. So I went back and I think I taught two days a week. So Tuesdays and Thursdays, I was at the college teaching this personal development class that I absolutely loved. I was focused on teaching college students how to become successful by focusing on their personal development. So it wasn't about, you know, study skills or or English tutoring. It was really about, you know, personal development, uh, personal responsibility, self-awareness, emotional management, And I loved teaching that because people who are like 19 and 20 and 21 are just stepping into their adulthood and they really needed that support. So I knew that I would really feel filled up by that. Also, when I taught this class, I tended to live better because I was living by those things that I was teaching. So anyway, this was, this was going along lovely. It was the fall semester and I was there two days a week and I was um, at the studio five days a week. So I was, you know, there less, but still working a lot, but I was really trying to scale back. And at this point in the story where I realized I'm burned out, it's the end of October. We were well into our semester. I had a lot of grading and planning to do. So I had gone to the library to get some shit done. I went and I chose a quiet desk in the way back where no students were. And I saw this plastic Lego sword on the desk. And I looked at it and I'm like, Jack would love this. He was nine or eight at the time. And I picked it up really curious. And I realized it was not a Lego sword. It was a needle and it pricked my index finger. And in that moment, 
I just remember watching the blood bubble form on that right index finger. Time slowed down and I stepped into panic, fear, and confusion. Obviously, there was no more getting shit done, which is what I had gone there to do, but time totally slowed down for me in that moment. I remember it really clearly. It was, you know, should I throw the needle away and pretend this didn't happen? Should I go to public safety and report the incident? You know, I was really conflicted in that moment because I knew that if I had, if I did the right thing, the thing that was best for me, that it was going to take away from all that I needed to do. And that's the moment where I knew I had really gone too far. Like when I am looking at this blood bubble forming and considering whether to throw the needle away so that I could get more stuff done, I knew that my priorities were really out of whack. So I went to the campus public safety. I went to the nurse. I learned that I needed to get to the ER right away, which was a good 40 minute drive away from the the college. And that day became a catalyst for a big change that needed to happen. Now, let's reverse a little bit. I'd known for about five months that I needed to get out of the business, but my big problem was I didn't know how. Like I told you, I was really exhausted, very crispy, unhappy, completely overworking. I felt ground down into a little nub. And maybe you've been there where you know that something is wrong, but you don't know how to fix it. And that that phrase right there, I don't know how, is a really paralyzing phrase. The finger prick was the beginning of me being able to take action, but I didn't know it at the time. It was the end of one part of my story and the beginning of something very different. Now, you've maybe heard that the universe has a way of whispering to us when something needs to change, maybe tapping us on our shoulder, and then it shoves us against the wall. And then when we refuse to listen, it drops the piano on our head. And for me, getting pricked with a random needle sitting on a desk was certainly in the realm of getting a piano dropped on my head. I didn't know where that needle had come from. I didn't know why it was there. So I was driving myself out of campus on the way to the emergency room, and I repeatedly kept asking myself, why did this happen? What am I supposed to learn from this? And no answer showed up. I kept asking in my head and out loud alone in my car. And then I called my best friend and asked her. And she simply said, hmm, well, what are you picking up that isn't yours? And it was like, boom, there it was. I was picking up all the things that weren't mine. I was overloaded, overwhelmed, overwrought, overworking. I didn't see how I could extricate myself from a situation that wasn't serving me anymore. I was exhausted, crispy. Like I said, that was my favorite word to to describe myself. I felt like a crispy piece of Brussels sprouts, like just that you, if you blew on it, it would just blow away and, and disintegrate. And I felt dead inside. And I used to say that too. But none of these were enough for me to realize that I was burned out until this moment when I pricked myself with a random needle. And I didn't know what was on that needle. I didn't know where it came from. So the universe had been whispering to me, but I didn't want to hear it because I knew that it would be really hard to get myself out of the business. The universe had knocked me against the wall, but I kept dusting myself off and ignoring it. But now the piano had been dropped on my head. So now the question was, how could I extricate myself from the situation of running a business that wasn't serving me anymore? How could I extricate myself from a situation that made me feel anxious, exhausted, angry, and hopeless? Well, the first thing I did for myself in this situation was ask the right question. What am I supposed to learn from this? Now, that's an important question because a lot of times in situations like this, we ask ourselves, why is this happening to me? And that's not a really helpful question because it keeps us in victim mode. But the question, what am I supposed to learn from this, puts you kind of in an action state rather than in a woe is me kind of mode. The next thing I did was I got quiet and I had 40 minutes to do it in a drive to the ER. And I started to listen to the answers that showed up. And what kept showing up was I needed a change and I needed a big change. So I had to acknowledge that that was true. I did need a big change. Things actually got tougher at that point because then I had to figure out the how. 
And as an owner in the business, I didn't believe that I could not be part of the daily running of the business anymore. So I knew I had to figure that out and I also needed help to do it. I had a coach sit with me for hours. She was a meditation expert and she sat with me quietly asking me questions, bringing me in and out of meditation, reframing ideas and helping me overcome my objections. Because every time she would suggest something, I would say, no, 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 I can't do that. And then she would help me see some new perspectives. She absolutely changed my life. I don't know if she knows that. I've told her, but I don't know that she understands to the depths that I was really needing her. I didn't even know how badly I needed a change until I spent that morning with her shortly after pricking my finger. If I hadn't reached out to her, the journey would have been so much more incredibly tough. It would have been longer. And I think I would have felt more desperate trying to figure out my how. I might still be in the situation. I might still be dead inside. I might still be irritable, crispy, and desperate without seeing a way out. So when I look back on this story, I'm actually grateful to that needle. No one in the administration of the college has any idea why it was there. There's a nursing school at that college, but those nursing students do not use those type of needles. It was a needle to to draw blood. They don't use those type of needles. And it wasn't a hypodermic needle, nor was it dirty. So nothing was transmitted to me, but I did have to pay for a very expensive round of prophylactic drugs to prevent HIV AIDS or hepatitis. But if I had not picked up that needle, I don't know how I would have extricated myself from the vortex I kept myself in. I knew that I was unhappy and I'd known it for months, but I was terrified and mystified about how to solve for unhappy. And I want you to know that if you really understand what I'm talking about, that we have all been there at some point. We've all been to the place where we feel overwhelmed, overwrought, confused, exhausted, unhappy, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Fill in the blank. I want you to also know that there are solutions to help us get out of a situation. You might not be able to see the solutions yourself. You also might not be able to believe them when they're brought to your attention. Like you might swat them away like I did for a really long time. But we have to listen to what our brains and bodies are telling us. And in order to do that, we have to start with getting present. Now, I'm not very good at living in the present, and I find that most of my clients aren't either. We can't know what's going on with us until we tune into our current situation. But many of my clients are constantly living in the past, reliving old wounds and replaying old situations. And if you do this, you're not going to be able to move forward easily. And that's what I was doing in my business. I was living in the past. I kept reliving the old wounds, retelling the old stories, and I could not move forward. Now, I have other clients who constantly live in the future and they're worriers. They're filled with anxiety. They worry constantly about what will happen and feel anxious. Does that sound like you? Because if that's true, then it's very hard to move forward also because you're constantly worried about the what if and what if this and oh no, what if it goes that way? How often do you sit with where you are right now and just notice where you are right now? not letting your brain get ahead of you or allowing it to dip into the past. Now, I admit I'm not very good at this and I work on it every day. In my situation at the fitness studio, I was always on overdrive. There was just a lot to take care of on the back end. And it was like I couldn't get any air and I couldn't sit still. It was like I, I couldn't win no matter what I did, I felt. It was constantly, what's next? What do I have to do? How am I going to take care of that? Oh my God, I'm never going to catch up. I'm never going to be able to get it all done. The other question that I asked myself all the time that kept me stuck was, how did I get here? How did I let this happen? How did I not see this before? That's the living in the past that keeps you beating yourself up. So if you're asking questions about how did I get here and what's next, you're not living in the, well, what's happening right now moment. And that's why it's so hard to know what to do next. 
It's like we race against ourselves. We push ourselves forward with worry and anxiety while also beating ourselves up with past choices and regrets. Personally, I was losing the race. I knew something needed to change, but when I was in a constant panic state, I could see nothing clearly. So let's remember, to see something clearly, you need to be clear and present with it. But I want you to know that being present is really hard because it requires discomfort. You can try to outrun the discomfort, which I did, but in some way it will catch up with you. And that's when the piano will fall on your head. It's like, bitch, listen up. I've tried to get your attention before, and now you've got no choice in the matter. Sit down and listen. The presence thing, it means you have to go inside and look at what's going on. And that's hard and it's uncomfortable. And you also have to ask good questions like, am I feeling happy? Is this what I really want? What do I really want? And I know from my own life and also from working with my clients that those are the hardest questions ever. People don't ask themselves questions like, am I happy? Is this what I want? And what do I want? But until you ask those questions, you will remain on the hamster wheel, gasping for air, feeling crispy, and maybe a little dead inside. Now, maybe you're not as far down the burnout path as I was, but I bet there's still something you want more of. I bet there's a goal or a dream that you want to see played out and life might be getting in the way. If you're ready to help yourself, start with asking your brain, what's the lesson here for me? What, do, what am I supposed to learn? And then ask your brain, what do I want? I want you to listen and listen and listen and think. And maybe you write or maybe you talk, or maybe you go for a run or a walk or a ride and you think and you listen to what your brain has to tell you because it will tell you, but you just probably have not been listening like I wasn't. And then you ask, okay, how do I get it? If getting present for you is hard, you've got to acknowledge that. But that's not an excuse to not do the thing. Please don't make that mistake because I made that mistake and the result was pretty disastrous. I was pretty far gone down the burnout path by the time I found a way out. My excuse was constantly, there's too much to do. I can't stop it or it will all implode. And guess what? It imploded anyway, and it did not implode on my terms. So go for a run or a quiet walk, get out in nature, sit with a meditation app. I don't care how you choose to get present. That's the choice you get to make. I want to tell you about how this is happening currently in my life right now, how I constantly have to work on the being present piece and not ruminating in the past or worrying about the future. This weekend, I was in Maine for a ski race with my son And I had planned on having a lot of downtime because of the four days we were going to be there, I wasn't skiing and I was going to be alone in the house that we were renting. And so I had saved up a whole bunch of work to do, including this, including recording this podcast. And so we got to the house and it was beautiful and there was no internet and no cell, even though the description told us there would be, it was not there. And so all of the work that I had waited to do for those four days, I could not do. And I was really frustrated. And so I kept beating myself up about what I could have done over the past week and gotten done so that I could have just really enjoyed this weekend and what the next week was going to look like because I had to jam everything else. So it was, it was looking in the past and worrying about the future. And I spent maybe an hour doing that on the first morning. And it made me anxious and angry and like kind of pacing around the house, trying to come up with a plan. And that is not where I want it to be. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to make the plan. I'm going to schedule what I need to do, reschedule the clients I needed to reschedule and just really be in the moment to enjoy whatever I could enjoy. So I want you to know, I still do this work every single day, trying to get present so that I'm not feeling anxious, nor am I looking backward and ruminating and regretting. Now to do this work, you might need some help. And that's where 
a counselor could help you if you have some healing to do, if you have, if you need a therapist and you have some healing to do around this, then seek out a counselor or a therapist. But if you need a coach to meet you where you are and help you see the way out, that's what I needed. And I don't know where I would be if I hadn't reached out and asked for support from a coach. If you need a little help, reach out because you were never meant to do any of this alone. From what I hear from the women in my online accountability coaching group, it makes all the difference to have some support along the way. If you're ready to stop the overwhelm, your recurring patterns, and your stuckness, why not join us? It's live coaching that's, that does three things. It will help you master your time. It will help you master your mind. And those two things together help you master your life. The reason I do this work is because I know without help, I wouldn't be here feeling much happier in my life, feeling more peaceful in my life. I needed that coach to help me move myself out of my own way. You can have that thing you really want, even if you don't know how or exactly what it is yet. And if you've been DIYing it for a little while and want to move faster, then learn more about the idea space. That's my online accountability coaching group to see if it's a good fit. You can find it at www.genlity.com. You take a look and see if it might work for you because I know that we can go farther and faster together to get you what you want. Remember that you deserve to have what you want. It doesn't make you selfish and you can have it. You just might need somebody standing next to you along the way. Thanks for joining me today. I appreciate your time and I hope it was helpful. I'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining me today. If you like what you heard, please subscribe to the idea space in your podcast app. Or tell that friend of yours who'd really love to bring her idea to life about it. If you'd be so kind to leave a review, then together we can help more women with the desire to create the life she wants find this podcast. Isn't it time we got our ideas out of our head and into the world? Remember, you can grab my free resource, Bring Your Idea to Life in Three Easy Steps, even if you don't have the time, by visiting me over at jenliddy.com forward slash time. I'll see you next time. And remember, all you need to do is take the very next step you know how to. Bye.